Hey, Attorney Steve Vondra, welcome back. We are talking in this video about fair use, music sampling. All right, so without further ado, let's head to the Attorney Steve whiteboard, litigation whiteboard. Okay, so I had a question. Somebody asked, what about sampling music? You're a copyright lawyer. Can we sample music? And I'm sorry about the outfit here, but I had to get in the mood. We're talking music. We're talking hit records. We're talking sampling. So I thought I'd have a little fun with it today. So anyway, we're talking fair use, music sampling. Is it legal? Can you do it? Can you take a little snippet of somebody else's song or their video and mix it into your music? Are you able to do that legally? Well, you're going to find out that there is a split of authority, okay? There's a split of authority over here in the Sixth Circuit. I will just call this Tennessee as part of, of the Sixth Circuit, and Nashville is in Tennessee. So they take a really hard line over here. No, no license equals infringement. So if you're sampling, you're using little pieces and clips of other artists or pieces of videos in your thing, you don't have a license and you're copying it, boom, that's copyright infringement. It's, so it's a hard and fast, what we call a bright line rule in, in the practice of law, a bright line rule. No license, you're infringing. Now in the Ninth Circuit, a different opinion came down. Now this is the VMG versus Madonna case. VMG versus Madonna. They took a different approach and this case dealt with a little horn hit. Okay, so they're like, Argh. And so she uses horn hit in the video and the plaintiff VMG said, hey, hey, that's our horn. You can't use our horn. And so a lawsuit ensued seeking money. And the court here took a different approach and said, look, look, it's de minimis. It's just, it's de minimis. It's a tiny little piece. And the average juror would not recognize that it was sampled from something else. Okay. That's a real basic of the holding. Okay. So now we have a split of authority. So really it comes down to, you need to start thinking about, well, where is the, if somebody's going to find out about the, the sampling, where are they going to sue me? Are they going to sue me? Do, are they located out here? in the 6th District, which covers, I think, Kentucky, Iowa, I think Michigan. Um, is, is If they're there or if the defendant is there, this may be grounds you know, to, for somebody to sue you in one of those jurisdictions. If you're sued in one of those jurisdictions and you say, you know, yeah, I, I sampled a few little pieces, under this law, that's infringement, Okay. Uh, if you're in the Ninth Circuit, if the, the plaintiff, you're the, you're the uh, accused person accused of willful infringement, and you're in California, Washington, Oregon, you know, Nevada, Arizona, Montana, the, the Ninth Circuit, well, you may be able to argue this case, VMG, all I took was a tiny little bit. No person would recognize it as the original. Okay, so this is a very important thing to understand. So the question of, is sampling legal? is it depends. It depends where you are and it depends where they are and where a lawsuit could potentially be filed. So this is analysis that is, is really tricky. It does require legal help to, I think in most cases, to make sure what you're using is going to fit over here or if you're going to be finding yourself in courts out here, okay? So um, as I have here in music law, as, as you know, we have a composition that has copyrights, and we have a sound recording that has the copyrights, okay? So whenever you have a song, the person who writes it, they have the rights, the singer, the songwriter, and that's, those rights are usually held by a publishing company. You also have the sound recording. This is what we call the master, the master recording, and that's usually owned by a record label. So if you want to be 100% safe, which I think you should, you can get a license, okay? You can get a license. Under this scenario, we're trying to rely on a fair use. We have no license, so fair use is our only defense. But under this, if you go and get a license, come to these companies, find out who they are, Go to like ASCAP or BMI and find out who the uh, publishers are and, you know, try to clear your, your samples, as we say, clearance, copyright clearance. Um, but the problem is that can be expensive. That can be time consuming. You know, you, you may not have the budget for it. So some people do have to rely on fair use. All I'm saying is we usually tell our clients, don't rely on fair use as the thing that's going to save you. It, it, it's there if you, if you have no other choice, 
It's a, it's a the last resort. It's a defense that you can raise to copyright infringement. If it's a fair use, it's not an infringement, okay? So licensing is always good. If you need to get an attorney to get your stuff licensed, that's great. However, if you find yourself in that situation, you may be relying on fair use, okay? So just remember, there's a split of authority. This is probably going to go up to the Supreme Court of the United States at some point. And to clarify, because there's a little riff. So I'll just give you just, um, <laughs> let me take these off for a second. Let me go into my other glasses here. Let me give you just a second. I'll read you just a, just a clip or two from the, uh, from the holding of this case. And this is VMG Salsol LLC versus Madonna Louise Ciccone, professionally known as Madonna PKA. Okay. Um, after listening to the audio, this is the judge talking. After listening to the audio recording submitted by the parties, we conclude that a reasonable juror could not conclude that an average audience would recognize the appropriation of the horn hit. That common sense conclusion is borne out by dry analysis. The horn hit is very short, less than a second. The horn hit occurs only a few times in the song Vogue. This is the song we're talking about, Vogue. Without careful attention, the horn hits are easy to miss. Moreover, the horn hits in Vogue do not sound identical to the horn hits from Love Break. As noted above, assuming that the sampling occurred, Pettibone truncated the horn hit, transposed it into a different key. This is transformation that we're talking about, and added other sound effects to the horn hit itself. So there was some customization going on of the horn hit, okay? Um, even if one grants the dubious proposition that a listener recognized some similarities between the horn hits in the two songs, it is hard to imagine that he or she would conclude that sampling had occurred. So this is what you want to be thinking about if you're getting into sampling. Um, the de minimis exception was discussed. This is important. I don't know if I have it on my board. I don't. But the de minimis exception, that just means you're using such a tiny, short piece that you're not you're not robbing the copyright holder of anything significant. You're not taking the heart of the work, so to speak. Um, plaintiff argues in the alternative that even if copying here is trivial, that fact is irrelevant because the de minimis exception does not apply to infringements of copyrighted sound recordings. So that's the argument they were making, and they were citing this Bridgeport Music case. This is a Sixth Circuit case. Bridgeport Music versus Dimension Films. And the court didn't buy it. The court said, no, we're not, we're not going to buy that because we conclude that Congress intended to maintain the de minimis exception for copyrights to sound recordings. Sound recordings. Um, we take the unusual step of creating a circuit split by disagreeing with the Sixth Circuit's contrary holding in Bridgeport. Um, so at any rate, so this is basically where the law is now on sampling um, so again, be very careful and I've got some tips here. I've got some general tips here for you. If you're going to be sampling some general tips to think about one deep pocket plaintiffs. Okay. Going sampling from, you know, well-known artists, big movie production companies, music production companies is a bigger risk because why they have deep pockets. They can shake, you know, they can take you into court. They can make the, the pain last quite some time. And they have the power and the ability to do that. And they have a history of, of being willing to do that. So keep that in mind. Smaller artists, if you're, if you're grabbing things from maybe some smaller, lesser known artists, you might be better off. Um, take only what's needed. This is the de minimis factor. I do have it up there. Take only what is needed. So if you just need a little piece just to make your point, take as little as possible, okay? And as I say here, make it unrecognizable. That's just what I, what I read in the case here. Make it unrecognizable. Transform the clip. Change the sound, the tone, the pace, the beat, all that kind of stuff. Or re-record the sample. That's another one. You say, well, I really like this horn hit. Well, go down and just create the horn hit somehow. You know, make your own horn hit. Um, here's another really good one. If you can use it for parody. Okay, so if you're now, this is tricky for a lot of people, and I always say parody is like shooting at the king. You better not miss. If you miss, it's not a parody. You got no case. You know, you're going to be, you could be liable for significant infringement damages. Um, but if you can use it for a parody, parody requires you to make fun of the original. So if you're taking a clip and you're using that to make fun of the original, that can be a parody. Okay. 
Um, but if you're taking the clip and making fun of something else, that's called satire. Parody has much more protection than does satire. So you want to make sure it's a parody, okay? Um, don't take the heart of the work, okay? Don't take the most famous part of a musical composition and because you know, somebody says that's the heart of the work. I mean, this is, you know, this is the, uh, the best part, you know, it's mama's got a, you know, um, a silhouette of a man's got a moosh, got a moosh. Will you do the bandango? So you want to, you want to not take the heart of the work of the original copy. Okay. Again, don't compete. Don't use the song name in their title. Uh, there was one company, as we know, the two live crew case. Um, they did their own version of pretty woman. And that ended up in a big lawsuit, um, but there wasn't sampling in that case, but it was just infringement. So they ended up back there in court, but basically don't compete with the name and the song title, okay? They got away with it. It was Pretty Woman and Oh Pretty Woman, but you know I wouldn't suggest using their song title and your song title. And finally, you can always use pre-cleared material, things like your garage band. Uh, there's tons of websites out there that will allow you to use cleared materials. There are creative common materials. There's public domain materials. So um, I hope that's helpful. I mean, that's just a general overview. Again, this is not legal advice. This is not a substitute for legal advice, but this may will hope you understand a little bit more about what we mean with mixing, sampling, mashups, those kinds of things, and just how far you can go. How far does the fair use laws extend? And think about license. If you can get a license, that's the way to go. So without further ado, that's it. I hope you guys have enjoyed that. Wanted to give you just a little sample of things I'm working on. So <laughs> no pun intended. So there it is. If you need some help with music, music licensing, contracts, let us know. You can find us on the web at attorneysteve.com. That's attorneysteve.com. The first name in hit singles. I mean, legal services. I'm getting all confused here thinking I'm a rock star. Anyway, I got to run. Have a great day. If you like this video, hit that little like button. Say, Attorney Steve, well done. I'm liking this stuff. Uh, make sure to subscribe. We've got lots of new videos coming out. And it's just going to be a great year, okay? So thanks for watching.